Good afternoon, YouTubians. Gary here with VW Jawbreaker. Welcome back. So as you can see, I got Jawbreaker out of the garage, Mama Mobile out of the garage. Well, what do we have here? This would be a transmission that we need to clean up, pull axles on, and get ready to ship this off for a rebuild for the 60. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so what we need to do is when you go ahead and pull the axle tubes, the axles off, drums off, strip this thing down just to the bare case. We'll get it all cleaned up. And our friends over at Super Clean were nice enough a little while back to send us some different cleaning products. I can tell you right now that the wheel cleaner works absolutely amazing. We have some floor solvents, some different heavy duty degreasers. We're gonna put that to the test today on the transmission with a cheap electric pressure washer and see how good we can get this engine case cleaned up not engine case transmission case what's on my mind today i don't know i'm tired so why all of a sudden now are we doing this well bill from bnd transmissions has decided he's going to help us out with the pro street build transmission for the 60. so this is going to get custom ring and pinion some custom gears welded Yada 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 blah blah blah. All the good stuff to handle the power of that 2054 from Jawbreaker and those 30 inch tires that are going on the 60. Can't just slap a transmission in and expect it to be good. We need something that's going to be strong enough and geared properly to handle it. So let's get to cleaning and get to working. Yeah, that fluid does not smell good at all. There's definitely some uh, shimmery shinies in there. Definitely some unky gunky on that drain plug. There you go. So, it's a good thing that we're having this transmission rebuilt. I would hate to put this in the car and then not make it very far. How bad would that be? Build the car, finally get down the road, and then transmission blow? I really don't want to go through that. So, let's go ahead and get the pressure washer set up. Let this drippy drippy, and we'll go ahead and get it cleany cleany. Well, the best we can anyway. All right, so we're gonna try out the foaming degreaser. See how that works. We'll let that sit a few minutes and we'll hit it with the old cheapo pressure washer but i can already see it eating away some of that dirt and crud from the side plates over here that's awesome oh so far so good did i get you wet oh dang it sure did can you see now? Hold on. How about now? Let's go ahead and flip it over and give it a real test. Oh, that bottom side is crusty. Wow, that's crusty. We'll do the same thing. We'll uh, give it a few minutes to soak in a little bit, start eating it up, and then we'll hit it. See what happens, but... So far, so good. Yeah, I know, I'm probably putting a little much on there, but this stuff's nasty. Well, that definitely took about, uh, can you still see? Yeah, you're dry this time took about 90% off of it. I mean, there's some, it's hard saying how old some of this rust and crushed stuff is. I mean, 
yeah, that's that's just flat out almost like cement. So we're gonna have to pick that off. But for the most part, I mean that stuff right there is even like cement on there. Stuff did a really good job cleaning that up. But we'll go ahead and take a, probably a little putty knife or screwdriver or something, try to get some of that knocked loose, spray it down a little bit more. But for the most part, man, this is getting really clean. All right, we got her back in the garage. So next, we pull the cotter pins, pull the 36 millimeter nut, take the drum off, do that to both sides. We'll go ahead and probably cut the e-brake cable because, well, we won't need it for this application. There's four bolts on the inside to hold the backing plate on, the bearing cap. We need to pull those as well. Then we can go ahead and start working on pulling these nuts all the way around here. We get the tube and axle off. We'll show you that. And we'll go ahead and pull some other little things off like the front bracket, the mount, ground strap, a few other odds and ends. So let's get crack a lacking. Those brakes look pretty crusty. Seals leaking the whole nine yards. Good thing we're not using any of that. That's oil soaked. So now we'll go ahead and take a 14, I believe. Go ahead and zip that cap off. Yep, 14. Should probably be wearing gloves. It's pretty grody, man. Well, that seal was shot. Definitely shot. Bearings don't look all that good either. I'll go ahead and tilt this side down and let her drain a little. Yeah, there's a little bit in there. Guess we can go ahead and knock off that backing plate too while it's down. See if we can do it without dropping it in the oil. Sweet! Alright, so your perimeter bolts here that hold the side plate on, <clears throat> there's like six of them or so. Those are 13s. So when you go ahead and pull those, get the wavy washers off. We're going to go ahead and remove the boots. And we'll just probably finish cutting those off. It's not like we're going to reuse these old ones anyway. Undo the clamps. I'm going to undo them all the way so I can just Take them right off and throw them out. Actually, these look all right. I might keep them as spares. It's amazing the stuff we keep sometimes, isn't it? Oh, there we go. Get a better angle. Wow, it's like, I don't even know what. It's ridiculous. It's like plastic. All right, now this bearing, everybody has a hard time getting out. I know there's specialty ones fuller and all that jazz. This is not in the car, so it's not as big of a deal. It's out of the car. So we can use a good two-jaw two -jaw puller. What we can do is use, 
by pushing down and sliding the shaft up, we'll actually get the bearing out and we can actually get the whole thing up and out of there. That was easy. We'll keep our spacer off to the side right here. And then this, that'll slide right off. Now what we can do is we use something else to actually get the bearing out of the outer tube. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and pull the side cover so we can go ahead and get the axle out of here. We're gonna keep all of this stuff together because it's been on this side of the car and a part of that assembly for so long. So back to the good old 13. We'll do the same thing and grab all the washers off, which there's a flat washer and a split washer. Make sure you get all the hardware off so you're not trying to pry on something that's not supposed to come apart. Try a better persuasion. Don't want to crack or break anything. I really do not want to beat on this thing very hard. Might be onto something there. Tapping lightly, I think we may have it. Or totally not even close. All right, let me fight with this some more and then we'll bring it back. All right, well finally, took a little bit, but we got it. Again, we're going to keep all this together. Oh. And then down in there, that's your side bearing that that cover went on. And right there is a C-clip we got to take out. Spring clip, C-clip, whatever you want to call it. Big old monster. I'm going to take that off. Then we can pull the axle out. Well, these ones do not want to work. Let's try these. These have little nubs on the end. Might make it easier. Oh, there we go. Let's bring that C clip out. And then, got the shim packs over here. We got that spacer. And down here, you've got the shim packs for the sides. Let me get a magnet and pull those out. There we go. That's what helps lock it in place. That's really about it. So we just need to make sure that that stuff all stays together with that axle. And we don't drop the axle. So that's one side torn up. Now we can go ahead and tear up the other side. The other side will be a repeat of this side. Let's go ahead and take a peek inside. See what we see. Not horrible. A little dirty. I don't know if this thing's ever really been apart. Definitely a lot of sludge down in there. Sorry, Bill. 
But at least now we know what we're looking at. All right. Get this side plate back on. We'll rotate it. Repeat. Rinse, repeat. Well, that's pretty much it. We've got the other axle out. Got everything marked. The only thing I didn't do on the other side I'm gonna do on this side is this center part after you remove your shims, your C-clip, your axle and shims in there. Uh, apparently this center part can fall out. And like I said, we're learning from experiences here, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the C-clip back in on this side just that way it's there, that doesn't fall out. So when I flip it back over, I'll put the other side in. But that's just about it. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for hanging out in the garage. I do appreciate you ever so much. Thanks to uh, McDaniels Motorworks for giving me a couple tips on pulling the axles and what not to do. Appreciate you, brother. All right. So till the next one, be kind to one another and be good.